The Jinhao 80 was first released in 2022. It's primarily made out of injection molded plastic and it has brushed stainless steel hardware. The design is heavily inspired by the Lamy 2000 and we'll do a direct comparison of those two models in just a moment. This pen is offered in a wide variety of colors as well as different trim finishes. I have this one in a green finish with gold hardware. The bottom finial is flat and it features a gold dot. And the top finial is also flat. The top finial is separated from the cap with a single groove. And then we have a brushed stainless steel clip, which is spring loaded and easy to actuate from the back. The cap has a gradual taper down and there is no cap band. It is a pull off cap, which reveals a Lamy style gold plated stainless steel nib. This one is branded with the Jinhao logo and an F for fine. And on the back, we have a typical Lamy black plastic feed. The section starts with a flare up and then it has a gradual taper to a gold band. The taper continues into the body of the pen and then it reverses back towards the finial. In the hand, the pen is lightweight, well balanced, and very comfortable for long writing sessions. Because of the taper, you can basically hold this pen wherever you want. The cap, posts, deeply and securely. It doesn't backweight the pen at all. It makes for a very comfortable writing experience. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Jinhao 80, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Jinhao 80, I wanted to take a moment to compare it here with its design inspiration, the Lamy 2000. We can see when the pens are capped, the dimensions are virtually identical. The Lamy 2000 is made out of a brushed macrolon finish where the brushed surface is applied after the pen is fully assembled. Doing this process allows the Lamy 2000 to have virtually seamless transitions like the one that we see here between the piston knob and the body of the pen. The Jinhao 80 in contrast is just an injection molded plastic resin where it has a grain texture applied to the tool itself. The Lamy 2000 is currently only offered in a black macrolon finish that we see here today, as well as a stainless steel option. And the Jinhao 80 is offered in a wide variety of colors and finishes. Let's take a look at these pens uncapped. Uncapped, the overall lengths of both pens are virtually identical, but we do see our most major differences when it is uncapped. The Lamy 2000 has a 14 karat semi-hooded nib, whereas the Jinhao 80 has a fully exposed stainless steel nib. Ironically, the Jinhao 80 uses the Lamy style nib, which is offered on nearly every Lamy product except for the Lamy 2000. Both pens have tapering sections. The Lamy 2000 has a contrasting section that's made out of stainless steel, compared to the Macrolon finish on the rest of the pen, whereas the Jinhao 80 has a section that has the same finish as the rest of the pen body. The Lamy 2000 has two ears that secure the cap in place, whereas the Jinhao 80 uses a metal band. The Lamy 2000 is a piston filler and it features a small slotted ink window, and the Jinhao 80 is a cartridge converter and it does not have an ink window. Let's take a look at these pens posted. Both caps post deeply and securely. And again, in this form, both pens are the same length. Disassembling the Jinhao 80, all you need is a little piece of scotch tape. The cap pulls off. And if we look inside, we can see there is a plastic cap liner. However, this one is pretty difficult to remove. So for regular cleaning, I would just leave this in place and run the cap under warm water. The section unscrews from the barrel. And here we can see our included converter, which pulls right out. I've tried to disassemble this converter and it doesn't seem to want to come apart. So I would just leave this in place and flush it with water to get it clean. To remove the nib from the section, grab your piece of scotch tape, put it over the front of the nib, and give it a pull. I haven't found an easy way to remove the 
feed from this section, so I would leave this in place and again, run it under warm water. So for today, this pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll start with our section and our converter. The converter just pushes into place. And then our nib has two ears on each side. Those ears hug rails that are on the nib. So you just line those up and slide it in place. We'll then attach our barrel and our cap. And now we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Jinhao 80, today I selected Waterman Harmonious Green. Cap unscrews. And we'll uncap our pen and remove the barrel. Make sure your piston, the converter is all the way down. Submerge the nib into ink and start screwing up the converter. I usually will extend the piston one more time to get a full fill, but that's a pretty nice full fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. We'll wipe off our nib. Cap our bottle so we don't have a mishap. Put the barrel back on the pen. Followed by the cap. And now we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Jinhao 80, the cap pulls off. And we're writing here with a stainless steel fine. And the nib writes pretty nicely. It is a bit on the dry side, so you might want to consider doing a little bit of tuning and spreading out those tines. Um, but it's smooth, and it provides a pretty good fine line. Our ink, again, is Waterman Harmonious green. For flex, I'm going to turn the page. No real line variation to be had. You do push out a little bit of ink. And then for reverse writing. Probably scra sounds scratchier than it actually is. Um, it's a fairly decent reverse writer. You don't really get much of a thinner line though. Perhaps a little bit. So take it for what you will. So what do I think of the Jinhao 80? I like many aspects of this pen. I'm a huge fan of the Lamy 2000 design and this one takes heavy inspiration from it. Um, some of the versions border on the line of being a blatant copy. But I think the fact that Jin Hao has introduced this in different color and finish options means that this kind of holds its own in the pen market. The Lamy 2000 design is extremely comfortable in the hand, and this one is no different. That clip is extremely functional, the pull-off cap is convenient, and the posting is very good. If you had some issues with the Lamy 2000 design, um, specifically the hooded nib, this could be a great option for you. Or if those ears on the two sides bother you, this does away with them with that little metal band. I think that's a great option. Also uncapped, I may be in the minority here, but I think that the Jinhao 80 looks a little bit nicer because the section matches the rest of the pen body. The writing experience on the Lamy 2000, though, is a lot nicer than the Jinhao 80. That 14 karat nib is just a lot smoother and provides you a, a nicer writing experience. That being said, the Jinhao 80 uses Lamy's proprietary nib design. 
which means you could swap this out for a different Lamy nib, even one of their 14 karat gold nibs, and drastically improve the writing experience with this pen. Now, while this pen feels a lot like the Lamy 2000 in the hand, it actually feels also quite a bit lighter and kind of cheaper, um, especially the capping and uncapping. It just doesn't give you a very satisfying feel. It feels a little bit clunky. And what I found in extended use of this pen is if you don't use this pen for eh, about a week or maybe a little bit longer, the nib will be dried out. And I don't blame the feed and I don't blame the nib for that. I blame the capping mechanism. I think that most likely there isn't enough interference between the cap liner and the top of the section. And what I wish Jin Hao would have considered is maybe making this a spring-loaded cap liner so that you know that you have a good seal. But besides that issue, I think that this has quite a bit of unique characteristics to it that lead me to say that it's not a copy of the Lamy 2000. The exposed nib, the lack of the ears, the cartridge converter system, a lot of people prefer that over a piston filler because they are a lot easier to clean and maintain. So I do think that there's quite a bit of merit behind this, and I love the fact that it's offered in a wide variety of colors. That's something that I wish Lamy would consider with the Lamy 2000, is introducing more colors and options, because a lot of people in this hobby do love to mix and match their inks and their pen colors. So with all that being said, I do think that this is a fantastic value and a unique option to be able to use basically the Lamy 2000 design with any nib that fits a standard Lamy Safari. And that just leaves me to say, thank you for watching.